everybody. Hey everybody and welcome back. This is part three of my series about confidence intervals, sampling distributions, margins of error, and sample size with Dr. Amy Gates. Welcome back. We just finished doing this particular example about sampling distributions and finding the mean of the sampling distribution. And now we're going to move on to the next example. In this example, we're being asked to find the smallest sample size needed for a given margin of error. So in this particular problem, my goal is actually to calculate a sample size. And I need to know what margin of error they're looking for so that I can give them the sample size that they need. Let's make sure this makes sense. A margin of error is how wrong you're probably going to be or how far your estimate is going to be from the actual population parameter. So for example, your sample mean might be within 5 or 6 or 0.05 or 0.001 or whatever error you want from the actual population mean. Using heights as an example, let's say the mean population for female height is 64 inches. Now, let's say you want to grab a sample and you'd like your sample to be within one inch plus or minus of that population mean. That means your margin of error is one, plus or minus one. Now, the margin of error is very dependent upon the problem itself because a margin of error of one wouldn't work very well at all if you were creating a new pharmaceutical drug that had to be within 0 0.00001 tolerance so that nobody died. So again, your margin of error is completely dependent on the problem that you're working on and the application and how close you need to be to what the population parameter would be. But in order to calculate the smallest sample size that you need, you have to determine what margin of error you want first. The smaller the error that you want, the bigger your sample is going to have to be. And that should make sense as well. If we want a teeny tiny little margin of error, if we want to be super close to the actual population parameter, our sample size better be pretty huge so that we're really getting a good estimate of the population. But if my margin of error can be big, if it doesn't really matter if the world's not going to come to an end if I make a slight error, then I can have a smaller sample size. The reason why we bother to calculate the sample size is for most companies, doing research and taking samples is extremely expensive and time consuming. And so in order to calculate the minimum sample size, we do need to know that margin of error. All right, so let's see how that works. In this particular problem, suppose you want to estimate the mean or average distance between two molecules in an elephant. Now, an elephant has trillions of molecules, so obviously you're going to need to take a sample. But sampling the molecules in an elephant can be very time consuming, and so you want to take the smallest sample possible, but you want your margin of error in this case to be 0.01 micrometers. You're also being told in this assignment question that the population standard deviation is 0.16. What is the minimum sample size required to give you this accuracy? Well, the good news is there's a formula for this. We can estimate the sample size that we need using this basic formula. We're going to multiply two times the population standard deviation, which is called sigma. We're going to divide that by the margin of error that we need, and we're going to square it. So in our particular case, the sample size that we need, the minimum sample size, can be estimated by multiplying two times our population standard deviation. Remember that was given in the problem as 0.16. Let me, uh, sorry, I popped the wrong direction there. So it's given in the problem as 0.16. And we're going to divide by our margin of error that we want, given in the problem as 0.01. So 2 times 0.16 divided by 0.01 is 32. Then we're going to square that value and get 1,024. So this tells me 
that I need a minimum sample size of 1,024 in order to get the margin of error of 0.01 that I'm looking for here. And again, this is the formula that I use, and this is an estimate, and it gives me, it's for a 95% confidence interval with this margin of error. I'm not calculating the confidence interval, I'm calculating the minimum sample size that I need. The reason I can use two in this formula, though, is that we're going to always base all of our calculations on a 95% confidence. And that's 1.98, which rounds up to two, for those of you who, who get sticky about the details. All right, so again, to calculate the sample size, my formula is n equals two times my population standard deviation divided by my margin of error. I do this portion, let's see if I can get that to do what I want it to do. I do this portion first, then I square the result. All right, excellent. That's the end of part three, and I have a couple more examples to do in part four. Thanks for joining me in the series. I'll be right back.